Hello humans. Today I want to do a little bit of a compare and contrast against two Buck 110s that I've gotten from two different antique stores. They're a little bit different and I want to talk about why they're a little bit different both from a design and design evolution standpoint but also from an purchasing and sort of the way things can be when you're buying knives from antique or secondhand sources. So without further ado, I'm just going to hop right into this. These are my two Buck 110s. This is the first Buck 110 I got. As you can see, there's a little check mark. Blah, 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 blah. There's a little check mark next to the 110 symbol. There you go. And what that means is that this is a 1991 Buck 110. I got it for $15. At an antique store, it's overall in quite good shape. The uh, in the closed position, the lock is a little bit loose, mm, directly on my finger. In the full open position, there's a little little bit of movement, but there's no side to side movement whatsoever. It's clearly been resharpened a few times. You can actually see where the blade's been brought in from sharpening. It's a little bit short, I'll talk about that in a second, but overall it's in quite good shape. There's no obvious signs of damage, there's a few signs of wear. The back up here has a couple of pits in it where it's been hit with something harder than the brass. You can see a couple spots up here too, there's one right there that's pretty bad. But uh, overall this knife's in really really good shape. This is my other Buck 110. I can't get a specific year on it, unfortunately, because, as you may or may not be able to see, pick up what I'm telling you to pick up, you stupid camera. Um, this, it has two dots next to the 110 symbol, rather than any type of year identifier, which tells me that this was made in between 1974 and 1980. It is a little bit more square. As you can see, the 91 version is quite a bit more rounded. The 91 version also has bigger pin heads for the stainless steel uh, rotating pin. Or, I don't really know what to call that, but the stainless steel pin that holds the lock bar in place is a little bit more rounded on the 91 version, a little bit more protruding. It has quite a bit more colorful wood green to it. You can see the browns compared to the pure ebony black. It's quite a bit more square in the bolster scale things and in the actual wood itself. There's no rounding going on like in the later 91 version. This knife is in very very good shape though. There's absolutely no, no rock or movement on the blade in the open position. The lock feels quite new and is a little bit heavy. There's very, very little play in the closed position before you start actually having to open the blade. This blade is in exceptional condition and the 74 to 80 version actually came with its sheath. So from a design characteristic, there is some evolution that just happened naturally with buck knives. There's this sort of uh, harsher edges all got sort of rounded down just to make it more comfortable whether that be in the pocket or in the hand. The lock is quite a bit, it's actually a little bit thinner but it's also quite a bit nicer to push. The spring inside of it is significantly less harsh. They are however the same thickness as you can see. So despite the fact that this actually feels a little bit more comfortable and a little bit less bulky in the hand, they are the same thickness, they are right around the same weight. And now I want to get into some of the specific differences and what I find interesting about this concept in general, which is buying from secondhand sources. So specifically for me, this is an antique shop. Both of these were purchased at antique shops, very, very different antique shops. This one here was bought in a small family owned antique shop in rural Canada, very, very much farm town near where I live. Uh, it was bought in as-is condition, which at the time was actually a little bit unclean. It had some dried guts on it from the previous owner. And I bought it for 
So part of the reason why it was $15 is this was somebody's knife. It was most likely purchased at a estate sale, like a lot of the stuff in these smaller sort of antique thrift shops, secondhand shops are bought at either in small private sales or in antiques um, estate sales. And I'm fairly certain this was purchased in an estate sale, unfortunately, because this was somebody's knife. Like, very, very dedicatedly, somebody used this knife regularly. And you can see that just in how much it was sharpened. So, as you can tell, I'm lining up the pseudo bolsters. And you can actually visibly see that one knife is quite a bit shorter than the other there at the tip. It's also nowhere near as thick throughout the blade. You can see the... Sorry, it's hard to rest them on the pins. It's quite a bit shorter, and it's nowhere near as thick front to back. But it is well sharpened, repeatedly sharpened. It was kept in good condition. Lockup is good. It's a, again, it's a little bit loose down here at the base, but overall this knife is in very, very good shape because this was somebody's pocket knife. This was somebody's knife that was carried extremely regularly and put to work. There is signs of it having been knocked up against stuff in the front, a little bit of pitting, like I said. It's in good shape, it's well loved, but it's also well used. And that's sort of par for the course for these smaller, more local antique stores. You're going to be getting stuff that was well used by the people before they were sold, gifted, or picked up by this thrift shop, or antique shop in this case. And this is sort of a good show of what this person's life was. It came without a sheath because this person probably just slipped it into the pocket of their work pants every day. Uh, like I said, it's a tough little knife and it kind of tells the story of the person who used to own this. It's a 31 year old knife when I picked this up earlier this year. So it's not a new knife by any means, it's quite a bit newer than this other one, but it was most likely purchased near or near new by the owner and just carried until they died or decided to get rid of it. Um, yeah, and this was my introduction to Buck Knives. I think that antique shops, especially local antique shops, are a great introduction towards some of the more classic knife variants that you're constantly told if you're into knives that you should pick up or you should own. Um, yeah, this is my first Buck 110, enough said about that. I'm going to be doing some direct comparisons in a bit, but for now, I'm going to switch over to this one here. So this one here was bought at a slight, we're going to call it a fairly upscale antique store on Vancouver Island. Uh, so outside of the rural environment, much more higher end clientele, I guess, feels fair. This is the type of place that would very, very specifically go and pick up the best of certain items, not just whatever there happens to be or what you know you buy lots these are people who are buying specific stuff and reselling them and that's a little bit apparent in the price i paid 45 canadian dollars for this in comparison to the uh, 15 canadian dollars i paid for the other one but with that you actually get a little bit of an interesting case where this is not somebody's pocket knife I i'm gonna go right off the bat this was not carried regularly by anyone ever and the reason why I say that, first and foremost, the blade is in pristine condition, which if you're into collecting, it's really, really nice to see. It's not, you know, resharpened, slightly reprofiled, slightly shortened like this one here is. But it's very much lacking the personality that a knife gets over time. It's lacking those little spots where you can see somebody's finger used to rest. It's not as obvious on camera. Maybe it is. You can see a little bit of sh extra shininess right around here where somebody's front finger would go when they were cutting with it. This knife has absolutely none of that. None of that added personality. And it's actually a little bit, it's a very, very clear, like it's a good collector's model. And I think that's the important thing to stress here. This is a collector's model, but because it was never carried, because it never gained some of that personality, it feels less like a buck 110 should, in my opinion. Um, and this is gonna be, you know, contested between different people, but I like, my antiques to feel, especially when it's something like this. Like a knife is a very, very personal item. Um, as big collectors, sometimes we forget this, but there's a knife that finds its way into your pocket regularly because of something about it, because you love it or because it feels like it belongs there. And a knife that sort of becomes your knife. And I think that 
this knife right here is very, very clearly somebody's knife. This one wasn't. And it's not just because it was kept in pristine condition. That is a big part of it, but it's not just that. You can also see some oxidization on the brass. I haven't gone out and cleaned this up yet because I think it's important to show. And there's lots of it on this side. This knife has been sitting in this sheath for an extremely long time. Now, the sheath is also in very, very good shape. There's a little, little bit of signs of wear, but by and large, this thing has not spent any time on somebody's pocket. Um, and as a result of not having been used, it's actually begun to oxidize in the case. If you don't know, brass, when left in contact with leather, is going to pick up moisture and oxidize, develop this sort of green film. It's very, very easy to remove with a polisher or even sandpaper if it's like particularly ingrained in there but even for being such a pristine model you know it's all still tight it's still everything you want it to be the lock is very very stiff um it's not very broken in at all which is great from a collector standpoint but from somebody who loves storytelling from somebody who's into antiques both because of what they mean historically and sort of uh, in terms of like what they represent in certain periods of time, but also as somebody who likes stories, who likes the personal aspects of antiques, and I'm getting off into the weeds, and I apologize for that, but these two knives tell two very different stories. This knife right here, I adore. It's not a knife that I'm going to carry very often. It's not a knife that's going to get as much love from me because it doesn't feel like I'm carrying on a legacy. And this is an emotional response thing. This is something that some people are going to think of as very, very important in knives, some people are going to think is completely worthless in knives and should be ignored. But these knives come from different places. And because of the different places that they come from, this one here being from a more high-end boutique, from being a more fancy place, it's going to be closer to a pristine collector's aspect, what a collector believes to be important. And that's fine. I am also a collector of knives. There are knives that I love that I never use because I've collected them, specifically for collecting sake. This is going to fall into that category for me, unfortunately. Um, and I say unfortunately because I do believe the Buck 110 is a knife that deserves to be used, that has earned its place in being a user's knife. And actually, sidetracking a little bit, but you can see very, very clearly with this knife here has been sharpened and used down quite a bit. Like, that's probably almost a quarter of an inch that has been sharpened out of this knife. I think the tip probably broke at one point and it had to get reprofiled, to be honest. But, um... Back to what I was saying, this is a knife that I'm going to use regularly. And it's a knife that I have been using regularly since I picked it up a few months ago. Because, in truth, every time I carry this, I feel like I'm extending a legacy. And yes, that is sort of the emotional side of carrying this knife. And don't get me wrong, it's not better or worse than this knife. Actually, it is. It's arguably worse. It's in a less valuable condition state. But I do believe that there is an important place for carrying on the legacy of a knife, for carrying on sort of what this knife means. And I'm going to pull up really quick another example of this. So this right here is a slip joint knife made by Klein Tools. And it's an electrician's knife uh, in sort of the sheep's foot blade profile made by Klein Tools in Chicago. And the reason why I bring this up is because it doesn't have a perfectly straight edge anymore. It's been resharpened and used by whoever used to have this to the point where every time I use this now, I can feel where this person thought it was more or less important to do certain things with it. There's a very, very slight divot right here where this person probably used it the most in push cuts. The tip has been slightly drawn back. It's still flat, but there's a secondary point almost. Uh, it's not really a point, it's more of a curve, right? here about an eighth of an inch away from the leading edge where this person probably reprofiled it so they could draw cut slightly better with less slipping or poking into stuff and i think that that continuation of stories is really important when you use a knife it's important to be able to see where a knife sort of belongs and where it fits in the world and I believe that this knife, despite being a prime example and a knife that I love and I'm going to clean up and take great care of, and yeah, it's going to spend some time, you know, being used, it's not going to get as much time as this knife because this knife right here is telling me a story that I like to hear. 
Anyway, uh, that's just some rambling thoughts on sort of the differences. There is a few actual important notes. For example, the later version actually has significantly larger uh, pin heads on it. Just as designs change, it's quite a bit more rounded off compared to its previous version. The lock is significantly less stiff, which just makes it nicer and easier to use. So there is some elements that are just objective, like this rounded piece right here compared to this really, really harsh corner. But a lot of this is really and truly just an emotional experience thing. And it's not going to be the same for everybody. And I'm not saying my way is right or wrong. It's just how I'm placing value in my personal lives. Don't get me wrong. Great knife. Going to continue to use it phenomenal belt sheath it's going to spend some time on my belt but this significantly older knife is going to be the winner for me just personally because well it tells me a story and i like the idea of being able to expand on that story um this is a lot of rambling i didn't go much into the history of buck knives i'm going to do that later once i've collected a few different models not just the buck 110s and i've got a weird canadian model we'll get into all that stuff later but for now um, thank you for listening. Stay safe and have fun out there, guys. I hope you enjoyed.